Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our virtual classroom and another lesson in our trades training video series. I'm Joe Carswell, and this session is going to cover power tools used to install electrical. So let's get right into it. First of all, let me say a lot of these power tools you should already know about. They've been introduced to you in the program. We have information about them. What I'd like to do here is to relate them to this process of installing electrical systems in a structure. And we'd start with a very common one. This is a cordless drill. Cordless drills are good for boring holes and driving fasteners. And we, as electricians, need to drive a lot of fasteners. And we also are going to be boring a lot of holes. We need a pathway to pull our cables through, through the entire structure from one end to the other to get an electrical system installed in a building. And you might see different types of bits installed in these drills. This is a spade bit. And a spade bit is a type of a bit that is going to make a small to medium size hole, a very rough uh, quality hole, but it's an inexpensive bit that has gained popularity. These come in different sizes, anything say from three eighths of an inch, which would be very small, to an inch and a half, which might be pushing the largest range of a spade bit. Anything larger is gonna get hard to maneuver. And one thing to mention about these bits, they're flat. You might hear them called a paddle bit. And these will start a hole using this pilot point, and then it's going to cut the width of this bit. It's also going to use these tiny points to help cut through or bore that hole. One thing to mention about these bits are they are very unforgiving if you get out of the axis of your hole that you're drilling. If you tend to, to, to wander that bit or change your direction while you're drilling, that thing can really lock up and it's going to kick that drill. So keep in mind when you're using these bits that they need to be drilled straight. It's up to you to make that happen. Another type of drill you might see that's cordless would be an impact driver. These are a smaller version of a cordless drill and they're limited to driving and removing fasteners. They have a little bit of a, an impact feature to them. This is going to assist in driving longer fasteners, but this is a nice compact drill that will take a driver bit and now we can use it for specific fasteners. This drill is going to be the moneymaker for an electrician. This is a high torque, high power drill that has a right angle configuration on it. This is a two handed drill for sure. Some people call these whole hogs and they talk about a kick. This drill will kick, it will break your arm if you're not hanging on to it. It has this right, it has a gearbox in it and it's going to turn the spindle at a right angle to the way you're holding it. This is going to allow you to reach into small spaces in walls, in framing, and work this tool into a tight space to bore a hole, say, through several layers of material. The power of this drill will not be hindered by the number of layers that you're drilling through. It's only limited by the bit, that the length of the bit that you install in it. A type of a bit you might see in a right angle drill would be an auger bit. And a lot of electricians bits are gonna be a lot longer than the examples that I'm showing you here. But keep in mind that the drill bits other than the length are all the same. An auger bit, this specific auger bit has a screw point on it. And the purpose of that is just like a screw. As that drill twists or as that bit twists into the material, the screw tip is going to pull into that material then the cutting edges are going to start cutting away the material as it's pulling through. And then the flutes are going to wind and move that material out of that hole as it's being bored. So you can imagine with a high power drill and a bit that's pulling into the material, this is a very serious operation. And with this drill, you need a lot of safety and a lot of control. A hole saw is another type of a bit you might see in a right angle drill or say another type of electric drill. These are require a higher power drill to operate. Anytime you get into a larger hole, you need a lot more torque than say a cordless drill can deliver reasonably. And this is basically a cup with teeth on it and it has a centering or a pilot bit that is going to keep that bit 
centered and keep it from wandering. And then the teeth are going to start cutting into the material. This, the teeth on the cup are going to continue to cut. The limitation with a hole saw is going to be the depth of the cup. So as you see here, this is a, about a two inch cup. And so we're not going to be able to drill through any more material than say a two by four thickness. So the material then will be inside of the cup and we have to pry it out from the side and then start over again. So keep in mind that your hole saw, very powerful, can make any size hole from say an inch up to six inches if you have a powerful enough drill, but they're limited in the depth of material by the depth of the cup. When talking about hole saws, keep in mind that there are actually two parts here. One is gonna be the cup that's interchangeable that's going to change sizes. The other part is the arbor that's going to hold the pilot bit. That one is going to screw into different size cups. So you have a whole kit and that's the way you interchange them. A lot of times if we have to drill holes, we have to drill it through material that's not going to be very friendly, like concrete or masonry. That's going to take a, an electric drill for sure and it is going to require special action from that drill. A hammer drill is going to be one that has an impacting or hammering feature as it turns the bit. And combined with a special bit, which would be a masonry bit, the, these two together can drill holes through any material like stone, concrete, or masonry. If you look closely at the tip of this masonry bit, you'll see the carbide end of it. That's what actually does the cutting. And it does not really cut, it's actually grinding material away. So with every hammering and turn of this bit, that carbide tip is going to take away more material. The fluting is going to carry the dust away as the hole is made. You might see a reciprocating saw in an electrician's hands. If you think about it as electricians, we're always working in buildings that are already erected. The building needs to be modified and we're doing the modifying, we're making room for all of our systems. A reciprocating saw is a great power tool to use when you need to modify a structure. And if you're not boring holes, this might be trimming or taking out some places, some framing, making room or path for our electrical. A portable bandsaw is a power tool that is the equivalent to a hacksaw. This is a high production tool that can cut through metal, as in metal conduit used by electricians. An oscillating multi-tool is a fancy little trick. This is one of my favorite tools. Might be used by an electrician. This would be the power tool equivalent to a keyhole saw. You could make a lot of uh, trimming or adjustments to drywall in the finished stages of your electrical. So let's look at the action of this blade. And this is a variable speed trigger. And I'm going to pull it very slowly. And you can see it moving back and forth. The blade doesn't move very far. It's going to move the width of one or two teeth back and forth. And this at high RPMs is going to cut through our materials. This is not going to be a high production tool. It's to make some small adjustments. Let's look at this tool at full speed. They're pretty loud tools. You wouldn't be cutting with this all day or making super long distance cuts. This is for small adjustments, say a material like drywall. I love this tool for that. And we're dealing with a lot of drywall in the finished stages of our electrical process. Let's do a quick review of power tools used when we're installing electrical. Here is a cordless drill. No power needed, battery operated, can drill small holes and drive fasteners. This is a spade bit. It's a type of a drill bit, rough cutting, small to medium holes, and can be used with this type of a drill. Here's an impact driver. These are specifically designed to drive fasteners using a driver bit. A right angle drill is going to be a high torque, high power drill with a right angle to it to reach into small spaces in framing to bore holes to pull cable. An auger bit might be used with a right angle drill to bore those holes. A hole saw can also be driven by a high power electric drill like a right angle drill. This is a hammer drill. It has a hammering action that turns and that tool used with a masonry bit can drill through very difficult materials like concrete, brick, 
and other things like stone. A reciprocating saw is a common tool used to modify framing to install systems. A portable bandsaw is a high production tool that can cut through metal like electrical conduit. An oscillating multi-tool is a great tool to make fine adjustments in things like drywall. This is a list of terms used when we're talking about electrical and as always, I like to stress this idea of learning the language of building and using it on the job site, especially when we're talking about the skilled trades like electrical. So I hope you've learned something about power tools that you'll see on the job site in the hands of an electrician when they're installing electrical circuits. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. This video is a production of Trade Skills U, all rights reserved.